family owned shop in Loganville, Sosby's Garage, for all your automotive repair needs. We service all makes and models, foreign and domestic. We repair engines, alternators, brakes, alignments, AC systems, and more, using certified technicians with over 90 years of combined experience. We also offer same day service for some repairs. Sosby's Garage, 200 Bay Creek Road in Loganville. Dependable, honest, and fair. Look us up on Google or Facebook. We'll take good care of you. Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel, it's time for Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. We are the cornerstone of security in the Southeast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. I'm your host, Rick Strawn, the president of Paradigm Security, and we're excited to be with you today on Business Radio X. We are coming to you from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio, located in the beautiful Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel in Duluth, Georgia. If you would, please, everybody, hit that subscribe button for me so that I know you're there, and it helps me out to show that everybody is there. Each week, we plan to feature businesses in the Atlanta area, especially those that serve Gwinnett County and uh, people that work in the county. While all businesses have security issues, not all are about physical security, and we'll touch on that and all related aspects of security through the course of each show. Our guest today, I'm really happy to have Dr. Jeannie Burnett. I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name since you've married. I don't hear. Ah, oh, there ah, we are. There, there I go. am. Thank you, Mike, for turning on my mic. Yeah, he's good uh, about that once in a while. Now, what is it? Krenitsky. Krenitsky. Krenitsky, yes. Oh, uh, French. Okay. <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jeannie is the founder and CEO of the MANA Scholarship Fund. Uh, if y'all don't know what MANA is, we're going to talk about it here shortly. I was on the board a few years ago and. I can tell you it is a fantastic um, charity, non, non, uh, non-profit. Non-profit. I, thank you very 501 much. 501c3 organization. I see. I I'll give you feed those lead you the ins. lines, I, Rick. I give you the lead in. I'm setting you up. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so MANA is MANA Scholarship Fund um, was birthed in 2006, and we created MANA, myself and a colleague created MANA, because they, we found that there was not enough insurance, there was not enough um, funding for people who had life-threatening eating disorders to get care. And so we started MANA in 2006 um, and have put 25 people, we're about to put one or two more at the end of this year, into the highest levels of care, which is residential and or um, intensive uh like medical treatment um to restore their body and and their mind so that they can get the residential treatment so that they can get out of the hospital so well let me ask you this uh because a lot of people do know you here in Gwinnett County but a lot of people don't correct who is Jeannie Burnett where'd you come from what where'd you grow up what got you into doing what you're doing okay so, hey, Mike, um, we are, I am a uh, licensed clinical psychologist. I moved to Atlanta in 1994 from Memphis, Tennessee. So I, mm. my, my origin is really Memphis, Mid-South, and then I grew up in Kansas City from second through 12th grade. So I'm sort of the middle of the United States girl, came to Atlanta in 94, and left and went to Washington for my um, internship through my doctoral program and then loved Atlanta so much I came back. So you're kind of like peanut butter and jelly. You're spread all over. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Well, eating disorders, peanut butter and jelly. Oh, I get it. I get it. I happen to like it. I get it, but I'm... I know. (laughs) Thank you very much. It's about time. (laughs) Oh, what I have to do to get somebody to at least acknowledge it. Right, right I know. (laughs) <laughs> oh God! Now oh my goodness! Now we're really acknowledging it. Uh, wake uh, me up when I'm done. Um, you know, that's. I know your dad uh, was a somewhat of an inspiration to you a little bit here and there. Let's yeah. T- tell me about that. <sighs> Dr. Jim Burnett. I'm the second. I'm the Dr. Burnett the second. Um, so my dad. I never it, realized your name was Jim. 
Well, go ahead. Well, it's not. <laughs> Dr. Burnett, thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure we're, we're going to get through much today, um, but we are having fun here. Um, so my father um, is a physician, and he is currently retired. Um, and he, he had some addiction issues of his own. And when I, when I was 14, I quit gymnastics. I did that for about six years and then I quit at 14 and I developed my own eating disorder. I was anorexic for a year and then I was bulimic for three. And because my father had gone through his own recovery, I mean, he went through several recovery programs and... Um, when I saw the good that it was doing him, I said, w- well, one of the things he said to me was, you let me know when you're sick and tired of being sick, sick and, and tired. tired. Yep. And uh, probably a month later, I'm like, I have like my, I'm, I'm real thin and I've got no color in my face. I've been vomiting up my guts. And I said, daddy, I need, I need help. And so he That's and my mom, starts. yeah, he and my mom put me in one of the, I think, three treatment programs in all of the United States, which was actually in Kansas City when I lived there. And so um, about six and a half weeks of my 11th grade year, I was in treatment. And it was, re- uh, I, you knew you were sick because you were in a hospital because there was no housing and there was there was nothing in the 80s, early 80s. And so... Um, I, I went in, I got out, I fell back into my old habits and then mid uh, the end of my freshman year in college between my freshman and sophomore years, I went through a program called Karen, which is still in existence today. It's a five and a half day, um, intensive, very emotionally intensive, psychodynamic, psychodrama. You enact your, your issues, Um, I walked in purging every day, and after five and a half days, I walked out, and I have never purged again. You were sick of it, so to speak. And I got rid of the pain, the core. There's an element of an eating disorder where you have some sort of pain, a core. It's what I call the seed, and it just keeps everything else growing. And so when you can let go of that seed, and you can, like— let go of the pain and you can cry and you can deal with all of that you feel so much lighter you don't you're not carrying that burden around and so that's really i mean you're really going to the heart of who i who i am and who i was and why i'm doing what i'm doing no i think that a lot of addictions like an alcohol and everything also it's very the same very much the same way you've got that that seed that that base it baseline issue Mm -hmm. that somewhere along the way you've got to admit that it's even an issue yep and most people just don't have issues. Well, and a lot of, a lot of uh, especially being bulimic and, and wanting to be in control, it's like if I would binge and purge one day and then it was like, okay, okay, I feel so gross. Okay, I'm just not going to, I'm just going to reset and I'm not going to eat the next day sort of to give my body a break. And then you eat but too much to make up for it. Then it's like I'm starving. And, and so I didn't, I didn't have, we just weren't. Um, the eating disorder field has grown immensely in the last, you know, 35, 40 years. And now we have a lot of different programs, a lot of different steps that we can do. I didn't ever go see um, a dietitian afterwards. Um, I did see a psychologist, but um, it, it really took a lot, a, a number of different interventions but for me. A lot of things have changed over oh, the yeah. few years, uh, the last 20 years, really. And really, with them, over the last 10 years, they've changed a lot. But You and I remember when there weren't computers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, what does the word, what does manna stand for? What does manna mean? So manna um, is a biblical word. And in the, um, in Exodus, it talks about how the Israelites were, leaving and they were going through the desert and they were in the desert for 40 years to go to the promised land and going through the desert for literally two generations um they're gonna get hungry because there's not a whole lot that grows out there so they prayed to god and they followed god through the desert so in your emotional desert um you pray to god god gives you manna from heaven which is literally he he rained down manna so in the morning when they would wake up they would have these like little frosted flakes looking things on the ground of the desert floor 
and they could take it and they could make bread and they can do all kinds of things with it. And so they had manna and literally manna is means what is it? And so um, when I used to run, you know, 15 years ago, I was like talking to God and I was like, what do I call this place? And he said, manna. <laughs> I said, that's really kind of cool because it's a daily provision. You couldn't take too much. You can't take too little. And it's liter- And you, if you take too much, like in, in manna when, in the desert, um, it would turn into, it would spoil, would mm-hmm. have worms in it the next day. So that's literally what manna is, the heart of my organization is, is when you are in your emotional desert, God is there. And he will give you what you need. Not necessarily what you want. He will give you what you need. Right. Yep. Well, what prompted you to start MANA 15 years ago? And we talked a little bit about it a minute ago, but what actually what actually kicked you into saying, this is going to happen, it's going to do it? A um, couple of things. One is I felt like I overpaid in my previous job because I was on a percentage and I made a whole lot of money one month and they took a big chunk of it and I said oh no not no mm -mm." (laughs) and so I spoke with um, I met a dietitian that was um, worked across the street when I was in Lawrenceville and she and I were both Christians and I said let's let's start a group and we started a group we had a group for about a year and then I was like let's let's start a company because I'm going to leave mine. And so she, and, and it was, it's scary to go out on your own. Oh yeah. And so um, going with someone is, is a whole lot easier. And so she and I started MANA, um, MANA Treatment, which is uh, the local Gwinnett-based treatment center that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also started MANA Scholarship Fund because one of the, one day a girl walked in, she was way too thin. <clears throat> she had already utilized her insurance benefits, um, and I couldn't get her. She was literally like, she looked like someone that was from Auschwitz. I mean, it was it was horrible, and she scared me. And I thought, if this is the population we're going to be dealing with, we got to do something. Mm-hmm. So um, it prompted me to look around. There was literally one other nonprofit that scholarshiped people into treatment, the Freed Foundation. Um, and I, I said, can I borrow your application? She said, sure. And boom, we, we were started. Well, what really is unique about MANA as far as, as a treatment center itself in the greater Atlanta area? What makes it unique? So, um, other than the fact that my staff and the core, really the backbone of MANA is that we are Christian. Now that does not mean that we only accept Christians. Um, we, it's kind of like Jesus like we we want to be Jesus with skin on so we we just love people um we have all different kinds of people we have males we have females we have transgender we I mean we 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 love everyone well, everybody has addiction right well yeah. and everyone has pain yeah and that's really the core I mean manna has grown from just not just working with eating disorders which is literally one of the hardest ad- the hardest addiction because it's the only addiction that you have to have food every single day in order to survive and live you don't have to have alcohol you don't have to have drugs you don't have to shop you don't have to do any of the other things so and it's very physically um precarious you you can just get uh very very sick and 23 people die every day from an eating disorder so the other thing about manna is that we are not owned we are a nonprofit, and I chose to do this differently. Every other program that's out there, most other programs that work with eating disorders are owned by a fund, a hedge fund or a big corporation. And so <clears throat> MANA is different in that we scholarship people. If they run out of insurance, if they don't have money, if they have the wrong insurance, and we have plenty of you know enough enough money to come in that covers the overhead um, then we will scholarship people through our program and literally I mean we've done free treatment before so we just we want people and we will vet them we want to know that you want to get better and so if you want to get better and you don't have the means then we will help you and I will reach out to um, my big donors and say hey look I've got somebody that's coming through and this is what we need. So um, 
But you've got to be there. It's not you're not looking for the relapser and the one that just can't, not really ready yet. You're you're ready for the people. You're looking for the people or open to the people that are ready to really do something about it. Right. When we look for someone to scholarship. Now, we have all kinds of people that come through because we do accept insurance. Mm -hmm. So we are a CARF accredited organization, which is an international accreditation so that we can accept insurance. We accept most of the major medical insurances. So through that process, the last four years have literally been hell. Um, just a f financially because you have to run the program before you can ask for the insurance oh, yeah. and you run out of money and so and they're slow paying yeah <laughs> yes but um, so we we made it um, and we are now fully self-sustaining and plus and so what we do with the plus is we provide scholarships we, we hadn't been able to do any scholarships in the last four years for residential treatment and we are now, we've completely gotten out of debt this year. Awesome. And yeah, <laughs> and we um, are working on putting one, maybe two people into treatment by the end of December. That's, that is just absolutely terrific. Because I remember back when I was there, the, the goal was to try to get somebody and do as much as you could with what you had. And that was really, the goal was just to do as much as you could with what you had, which wasn't a lot. Right. Right. And I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a rejoicing time when someone actually got in, much less graduated. Well, and we did about three years ago. We did a ten-year retrospective study, and so we got in touch. I think we could we found twenty-three out of our twenty-five recipients. Wow. And like, there's one woman. There's several of them that are like, you literally saved my life. And I don't, I don't usually get moved to tears very often, but when I was sitting down with a woman who was very, very sick, she was literally on the brink of death. And when she looked at me and she said, you, your organization saved my life, and now I am at Emory getting my doctorate in microbiology, like, I, it blew my mind. I, I, so you're going to be a donor now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, no, I assume awesome. that, you know, it, what goes around comes around. Payback yeah. is, is, is something from the heart. So, And there, and, I mean, there's another woman that um, when I put her in, she, we literally pulled her out of hospice. She was dying from her eating disorder. We put her in treatment for three months. She came out, and she was not a pleasant person. How long ago was that person? Did that person go through it? Was that when I was there? Maybe. It was probably six or eight years ago. Because I, I remember, I believe that I was there when that was when that was going yeah, on. Yeah. I went down and visited her in yeah. the hospital. And when we did our retrospective study, she said, I know that it was difficult back then. She's, she's still in treatment. Like, she's been, but she said, I want you to know I'm doing so well. I am stepping down. I have finally got my life back. And I'm going to be a psychologist. Uh, wow. <laughs> So, so you're uh, built perfect for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to get through this. I got a whole bunch of stuff I want to ask you. I don't want to <laughs> run out of time here. Yeah. Um, let's let's start with how is Man Affair during this year? Because this 2020 has been a challenging year as an understatement. But Why? What's going on in 2020? Yeah, well, nobody knows. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's been able to figure it out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, especially in the area that you work in with health uh, and mental health, mm. there's been a lot of challenges for everybody in yeah. just about every area of that mental health issue. I mean, you're lucky. You're, uh, you're one of the uh, essential, essential businesses, businesses mm -hmm. like we are. And I know you have prospered during this as far as your ability to work and grow, which mm -hmm. is what your what the whole idea is, the ability to, to grow and provide. Right. So how have you done during this one? Well, as you said, people have really struggled. And so we have, um, we've seen a bit of an uptick, obviously, in our treatment um, for the eating disorder program. We also serve people like that have just normal issues like anxiety and depression and family issues and um so we've seen an uptick uh one of the things that we did while we were under lockdown in april and may is we did offer a free um uh, anxiety based group online through zoom 
to just try and help people who were struggling and just were tired of being cooped up and were, you know, just kind of feeling like they didn't know what to do with themselves. Well, eating disorders have support groups, just yeah. like alcohol and drugs and everything else. And it's kind of these people, when you're in that position, like, you know, firsthand, they need those support groups. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and the t- people telling them they can't go and get the support, that is a killer. Well, one of the things that we have invested in this year is Zoom, you know, the HIPAA compliant platform. And so that has actually helped us keep our program running even when we couldn't meet in person. Do you find the Zoom counseling as far as groups and all actually work? Yeah, um, it's definitely better, I think, one-on-one or for couples therapy or family therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, But definitely like uh, the way that I did one of my my four-week anxiety-based group was I just kind of taught, I have this whole program and I've taught, I taught four lessons out of that program. And um, so, I did that, and then we would have a little bit of discussion. But we also did um, our PHP, our partial hospitalization level of care, and our IOP. And they didn't like it because they still felt isolated. Yeah. But it was definitely something that sort of kept it kept everyone it's still together. Some kind of contact and some kind of interaction with other people. Right. I can't imagine an AA or an NA. They would have to be a specific group that met every day or every week that was always the same group in order to do something like that. You couldn't go into somewhere like the Gwinnett room over there, and you mm-hmm. couldn't go into something like that and everybody sit around right? have Zoom that was all there. But I can see where, you know, it, it could work with small groups, and well, especially in your end. Yeah, and, and actually one of our one of our clients ended up, um, she didn't have a safe place to live here during that time, so she ended up going home, which was hard for her, and she it ended up to where we actually were able to do some work with, with the parents, with, with her parents, so that um, she, I mean, that and that was like a, that was a unique situation because they didn't live here in Atlanta, they lived in another state so through the zoom platform we will we were we were able to still intervene with her and her family and get get that connection so well you know i know you you're still planning you're, you've grown you're growing what are your expansion goals for mana oh gosh so just a, a little bit um four years ago is when in 2016 is when i combined mana treatment and mana fund and that's when we started our CARF process. We were um, accredited, fully accredited in 2017. Um, 2018 was a very hard year <laughs> for me personally. Um, and then- With you, you got married? No, I'm just kidding. It, <laughs> just kidding, That just was kidding. literally the, the, the only good part about 2018. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, <laughs> that's the only good thing about 2018. And then, well said. Good recovery. Well, 2018 for my business was the worst year probably ever. But um, 20 in in 2020, um, we have gone from being broke and and owing money to fully out of debt, fully self sustaining, and um, that's and that's why we're able to do more scholarships this year. Um, the goals for the next year. Really, I'd like to do this next year, but a little time. Sometimes I'm a little overzealous. I don't know if you know that about me. <laughs> nah, not a bit. But um, so one of the things we want to do immediately, and this is really coming from some of our clients, is we want to have a recovery residence. And we're working with the Kirsten Haglin Foundation, which is out of Michigan. Right. Um, and they also uh, work with people with eating disorders. And so we are trying to find someone that's going to help us like either you know like Johnny Phelps used to say if you love someone <laughs> buy him a house yeah. well if you love manna buy us buy a house, house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, we would love to either um, rent a house from someone um, we would love a gift of a house um, but we want it to be somewhere close to manna which is literally up the street on Breckenridge and we um, so that our clients that are you know driving two hours away an hour away you know can stay kind of like the ronald mcdonald house for mana exactly yeah exactly ability to relax and right be a safe environment right 
Um, and so that is one, one goal, um, in the first, you know, first half of the year. And then, um, in the second half of the year, I'd like to be able to have enough saved up to where we can actually open a mana on the South side of town, like Peachtree city area, because there's nothing down there. No, Every people with all those golf carts, they got to have some kind of treatment. Right. <laughs> Well, they have a lot of eating disorders. Yes, they do. And so the mecca in Atlanta of um, where all of the treatment centers are is in Dunwoody. Yep. I mean, literally, you could stand on 285. I wouldn't do this, but you could probably throw a <laughs> rock at every one of the treatment well, centers. Pill Hill and everything, or yes. everything surrounding it. Exactly. And so we um, we would like to, we're we're just doing it different. I mean, I just, I like to see where everyone else is and go, oh, let's do something else. Well, different. a lot of people don't do anything on the south side. They do a lot of industrial down there or stuff like that, but they really don't do anything that it's a personal nature and, and a health nature. Really, there's really not a lot down there. Right, right. And I think manna would do very well down there. We are, all, we've also, we are also bringing on another nurse practitioner, so I have three. Wow. And so if anyone has any medication needs, needs any of that kind of assessment, we do that for all of our levels of care, which is our eating disorder, PHP and IOP, as well as outpatient care. So, Well, I tell you, y'all have really grown a lot since uh, I was hanging out. You know around. how many people work for me? I had how many? 18. Seriously? Seriously. You've gone from three to 18? Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, somebody's growing a little bit. God is blessing us. Yeah, for real. Uh, well, what does MANA need at this point in time to, to help with these goals? Basically, what is MANA's wish list? Um, so I'll start or small and go list. big. Yes. So um, one of the things that we have is basically a kitchen. And so we would love to have donated food products. Um, nothing that's diet, right? So we don't we don't do diet at the office. We are trying to get our clients to eat healthy, normal foods, because all foods fit. Um, Moderation is the key. Not. Yeah, if somebody wants to build out modification, the right? <laughs> if somebody wants to build out the kitchen, that would be great because I hate the sink. Um, <laughs> we need a refrigerator. We just we need a refrigerator. Um, we have a uh, fifteen hundred square foot warehouse. And in the That's summertime, good. yeah, in the summertime. So we, we, we've used that a lot because of social distancing. We're able to do it back there. And so um, in the summer, it's really hot, though. So have you ever heard of a big-ass fan? Mm -hmm. Literally, that's the name of the company. Yes, I have. We need one. <laughs> so I need a, I need a big-ass fan. Um, I need a house, right? Two. As well. <laughs> Two houses. Well. Let, we can start with small. Yeah, we can start, with, start one. with one. It's okay. Um, or if somebody just wants to or loan even us. one small house. Yeah. If somebody wants to loan us their house and not charge rent, that, that would be great too. Because we're trying to conserve all of the finances for the clients. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, funny, we are actually having a fundraiser on Friday. Well, that's perfect timing. Yes, it is. This, this interview that's is this perfect. this Friday, folks. This Friday, December the 11th. Um, if you are in Atlanta, you can go on our website, which is manafund.org, M-A-N-N-A fund.org, and you can find on under the fundraisers um, where you can sign up. Um, it is a virtual wine tasting. Now, does that mean that you don't, you can't taste the wine? No. We've literally got the wine here in Atlanta, and we are... Um, and they'll drink it for you and tell you what it tastes like. No, no. <laughs> we will deliver the wine to you. You can purchase the wine, three, three tastings. So it's three bottles of wine for $100 for a delivery fee of 20 We will bring you the wine. Really, that's not bad. Not a bad price. And then we have a Wolfgang Puck charcuterie plate that if you want to add that on, it's $20. And so we will deliver that on Thursday or Friday of this week. And so by Friday at 7, you can get on your Zoom and, and enjoy the wine. Log in. And, but the great thing is, is the Benziger ben family is out of California. Well, don't say that three times. All right. Row. And five of them are going to be on the call. So the owner and then the sommelier, like they're going to, they're, wow. yeah, they're really going to show and, and give well, us. They're really pushing it. Yeah. They're, they're really pushing, in support of Manna. Mm hmm. 
very much in support of MANA. Well, that so, is awesome. Yeah, they are, and they've got some great, like I went and looked at their website, and uh, they do a lot of great things for um, just the earth, and it's it's like all natural. They don't use pesticides. It's it's great wine. Well, you know, if somebody was interested, if they know somebody that drinks wine and all that, and they'd like to buy them a, a nice Christmas present. Absolutely. Uh, this might be a good way to do it, $120, and they've got their wine, they've got the Put a bow on it and give it to them. There you go. They can have and it delivered to them. It's three kinds. It's a Sauvignon Blanc. It's a Pinot Noir and a, oh, what's the other one? Boxed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of, it's, uh, it's another red. Chateaubriand? Oh, no, red, you said. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Chateaubriand is food. I, I know I you don't. don't drink don't. wine. I know, Chateaubriand. No, it's <laughs> food. I was kidding. <laughs> I didn't get my boom. Maybe it's a Merlot. No, it's a Sauvignon. No, I don't remember what it is. It's well, not a Merlot. I don't drink wine, so I couldn't tell you. I, I can't even help you. I know. I know. It's so, good. Well, I know it will be. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a great, great, awesome event. Yes. And, and we're also a part of that. We're also like kind of as a fun twist because it's the holiday season uh-huh. is we're also having a, an ugly sweater contest. So you show up. Well, uh, you've you got some of those. <laughs> Susan, I'm going to have to talk to you. That's Rick's <laughs> she's wife. Got, she's got some of them, too. I don't have any sweaters. You don't? No. Well, anyway, so it's an ugly. there's an ugly sweater contest, and you can win a gift certificate to there, which is in Brookhaven. It's a restaurant in Brookhaven. I tell you. And you got you know you do a lot of fundraisers at, through the year. Do you still do the golf tournament at all? So the last three years have been really rough. So Uh I have not done the golf tournament. Um, I have hired Sean O'Keefe and Mm -hmm. he is really spurring all of my, he's he's sort of reviving a lot of my old fundraisers, like the winter blues event, Mm -hmm. the barbecue event. Um, And then we're also planning on doing a golf tournament as well. That'll be cool. Yeah. Um, Well, you got anything else that you'd like to point out about manna? Because I know I've, I've run out of the questions that I specifically had that I wanted to ask you. But I know we could end up talking about manna for probably another half hour or so, but um, yeah, I know we, you want to. Yeah, we, we are. Um, the only the other thing that we need are some board members. Um, I've got four right now, and one one specific area that I need is a CPA to be our uh, treasurer on the mm-hmm. board. Yeah, those are good treasurers. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, if you have a CPA and you have uh, a heart for what we're doing, um, I would love to have you, um, you know, talk to me. Give me a call. Anything besides CPAs? Um, just other people just who love, lo- you know, who want to support us, who have some understanding about eating disorders. Um, we, we've also actually expanded into helping people with trauma. You and I were talking before yep. the show that MANA is different in that we not, j- not only focus on the eating disorder, but we focus on the core piece, which is the trauma, which is um, really difficult. But once we help the clients like get get more connected with it and start to deal with it the goal is for them when they leave mana they might stay a little bit longer at mana but when they leave we they that they won't struggle with their eating disorder ever again because we do believe in full recovery it's like if you can get on get to that seed and and express it and get it out then you know we believe that there's a lot better chance for wholeness and healing well it can be a long road and but it's uh, it's it's a great road when you get to the end of it if you actually accomplish it. And the sooner the intervention, the better. Absolutely. And it's got to be uh, sometimes a pretty strong intervention. Yeah. People are not happy with it. Right. But, um, Jenny, I want to thank you so much. Um, why don't you give your website again, and if you got any phone numbers or somebody wants to get a hold of you. Yeah. Um, the website is mana, M-A-N-N-A, fund.org. And the phone number is 770-495-9775. One more time on the number. 770, I almost forgot, 770-495-9775. Well, I want to thank you very much again for being on uh, Case in Point. It's been, it, a, it's been fun. Oh, yeah, it's always fun with you. <laughs> that we, you know, it's just, it is fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> Presented by Paradigm Security Services. Remember, you can join us live every Wednesday at 1130 in the morning. Or you can listen to our show anytime you want, including this one, by going to the Business Radio X, businessradiox.com and clicking on the Gwinnett Studio and then click, of course, on Case in Point. Join us next week at 1130 and we'll talk about uh, with business leaders about their businesses related to security issues in today's world. Thanks again to my guest, Dr. Jeannie Burnett. Thank you, Mr. Rick Whatever Strong. it was. <laughs> Krenitsky. Krenitsky. Thank you. Ukrainian. I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> I think it's I not French. Polish. It's, 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 it's Ukrainian. French. And for our producers, Mike and Miss Amanda sitting back there eating. And I am Rick Strawn. And remember, at Paradigm Security Services, we cover more than just your assets. Mm-hmm.